And we're back. Back messing around. Well, I know this looks a lot different from the last time I shut it off, and that's because I did a little bit of work off camera. Not a lot. Mostly just, uh, well, here, I'll go, th I'll go over what I did. So I opened up Blender because Unity just doesn't let you do this stuff. And I modeled myself a very spotty ball. <laughs> it's because I don't know how to do texturing that well. And uh, I made it the same size. I modeled out a, uh, a better course, you know, so all the vertices are joined together. None of this like wall here, wall there nonsense. Um, over here I have an actual hole for the golf to go in. And I mean, I, yeah, I could show you, I guess, how I modeled stuff, but that's not really what this is about. I mean, unless people actually want to see that. I mean, eventually I'll model more stuff, so you'll get to see stuff eventually. Um, and then I created this fancy, handy-dandy windmill, dude. Um, it's really just a, a cube with some stretched, a subdivided, stretched out um, surface, top surface. Um, and then a little cylinder for the, uh, the base here for the blades. And then I made one blade, which was just a cube. I kind of shrunk the top, expanded the bottom. And then I applied a, um, array modifier around the origin of the cylinder to get the fan. And of course I set up the parents and everything correctly so that I can do stuff like, um, this, you know, turn the cylinder, turns the blades. Then I created another cylinder, kind of similar to how I created the hole over there. And I put it inside this cube and I applied a Boolean modifier to this so that it would cut out a shape based on the cylinder. And that's it. Um, I then exported the model and imported it into Unity. And inside Unity, uh, really the only changes that I made, there's just a couple. I tweaked the physics a little bit, and if I can remember here what I did... Oh, I, I decreased the bounce threshold from 2 to 0.75, because 2, sometimes it kind of goes up against a wall and just sticks, that's because the bounce threshold was 2. So if the speed's anywhere under 2, it's not going to bounce. I thought that was kind of weird, so... That got decreased, and what else? Oh, I decreased the bounciness, because I had the, the bounciness at 1, so it was just continually bouncing. <laughs> it was weird. Oh, I know what I did. Yeah, so in the project settings, I also went to the uh, gravity and I doubled it. So it's not going to kind of hang in the air so long. It's going to feel a little more quick and cartoony. The only other thing I did is um, add an origin position to the ball so that when they press the space bar or they fall below world bounds, um, we can reset to its original position, also turning off its velocity and angular velocity. So let's see how this works real quick. Oh, and my, my camera should still work from yesterday. Can't zoom or anything, but it does rotate. And it stays, um, rotates on everything but the Z axis, at least. So, oh yeah, oh, oh, <laughs> of course, the main thing I did in Unity here is animate this stupid thing, which wasn't a big deal, but it took me a while to figure out since I never animate anything. But the collisions do work. Um, you know, you can go through here, you can get intercepted by a blade. Kind of. It's super skinny blades. Come on, dude. <laughs> there we go. Yay, we're pushed. And, uh, I think, I, th I think the roll is good enough for if this was, like, thin turf, you know, like putt-putt turf. And of course it'll fall in the hole, you can press spacebar, reset it, and there you go. So all in all, whoops, yeah, and then it of course falls out of bounds, it resets itself. So that, so here's how I did the animation. Final thing to go over here before I continue doing something else. I took the, oh, I mean of course when I, when I imported the model I had to set like collision objects and stuff. I use mesh colliders. I know you're not supposed to do that too often, but th since these are very simple meshes, I figured it wouldn't be a big deal. So once I got all the colliders set up, I went over here to this guy, uh, this this blade space, and I 
Uh, what did I do? I created an animation component, which I know is kind of legacy. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with Unity, you're supposed to use an animator, which is way more complex in my opinion. But I just used a simple animation and I, in the um, in the project settings, wherever it is, I set it to loop. So it just continually does this thing. And then of course, um, in the animation itself, all it's doing is it has a rotation. I think it's the Y value that changes. Yeah, it rotates from Y zero to Y negative 360. So it does a full rotation. And I just had to make sure that it was linear and not curved so that it loops properly without slowing down and speeding up. That's really it. Um, the, the physics and everything take care of themselves. So let's keep going and see what else we can accomplish today. So I told myself, today's going to be the day where I add some type of launching mechanism. And I've been thinking about it. I have not done my homework yet, so I have not looked at like the golf with friends and what the golf games. I know I was supposed to reference those, um, but I simply haven't done that yet. So, instead of doing that, let's come up with my own terrible idea and see, see how it plays out. So once it's placed, you should be able to kind of like pull something back like a um, like a pinball machine almost and launch it however fast you want to launch it. I'm almost wondering if I want to give it like a, a little halfway transparent um, putting club. Is that what it's called? Putting club? Putter? You know what I mean. And just kind of have it sitting here and then when you click on the putter, maybe as you, um, no. I don't know how you'd position the putter, but it would, it would always stay at the same, like you shouldn't be able to hit it up in the air, right? Or I don't know, maybe you should. But for now, let's just assume you want to hit it flat. So you'd use some method to rotate the putter around the ball. And uh, I don't I don't really want to give you guidelines yet. Maybe, maybe we will in the future. It's easy enough to do with ray casts or rays, but um, then once you decide to swing, you just kind of pull it back. You know, it's clamped to a certain point. And then when you let go, or maybe when you click, I don't know. But basically, you pull back a putter to whatever point, and then you swing, and it goes. Now, the putter won't actually collide. Um, I'll just apply a force. I don't want to mess with, like, actual physics of ob an object propelling it through. Although I could, I think that would add a level of complexity that I'm just not ready for. And I don't know if it would be as enjoyable in the end. It'll have the same effect, and it'll visually look the same, so... Okay. So first of all, I guess let's make a putter in Blender. Because... Or should I not do that? That's gonna be a slightly time-consuming. Maybe not, okay. Let's not let's not do a putter yet. Let's make a cylinder in Unity first and go from there. Game object, 3D object, cylinder. There we go. I don't want it to have a collider. Just reset its positioning. Move it back here a bit. Negative nine, make it, I don't know, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, uh, actually 0.25 and then maybe like three, no, nope, two, one, one. Then I'll just drag it up. Let me move it over real quick. Actually, that's, that's pretty much perfect. So the ball is at what? Where is the ball? Negative eight, one, four. If so, if I put this here, that doesn't matter. As long as it looks good. Okay. So there's our putter. Let me just line it up on the z-axis. It's a zero. Cylinder should also be a zero. Oh, I guess it is. Hmm. Oh, maybe... Hmm. That looks... That looks wrong. <laughs> it was unintentional, I swear. <laughs> 
not bad, not bad at all. Okay, um, <laughs> why does that top look bigger? Hold on. Okay, whatever. Blame Unity's shadow system. <laughs> okay, enough of that. It's not that type of game, guys. Maybe holding the left click positions the putter around the ball, like kind of on a track around it. So we're gonna make this have a um, have a material. We're gonna create a new material, and we're gonna call that material putter. Put 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 put. And we're going to apply that material to the putter, and make it transparent-ish. No, it doesn't like that. Well, that's because the shader needs to be. Oh, hold on. Wait, standard. Uh, maybe I can do this, actually. Yeah, okay, that's what it was. And let's make it more thin while we're at it. It actually looks like a little club. Club stick. Alright, so that's that. It's somewhat transparent. It's still not transparent enough for me. Okay, we'll stick with fade. And in that case, I bet 50 is a good value. Yeah, that's that's pretty transparent. I like that. You can totally see the ball behind it. Okay, now that we've got our transparency issue solved. Um, okay, let's do this. So based on the mouse position, cursor position, I should say, um, we will have the pole follow around um, in a, like, in a line, but constrained to a certain distance away from it on the X and Z axis. What do we need to do? We need to store the game object of the putter and of course find it. Let's name it first. I need to rename the sphere. Let me do that in Blender while I'm thinking about it. Rename this just so. Okay, cylinder. Let's call this butter. Put. Then object of find putter okay so now we have it in memory so on every update uh, we will want to update its position I'll just go ahead and call that from the update. Now in here, we need to do something. We need to figure out the angle from the ball to the cursor. So figure out the angle from the ball to the cursor and then move the putter to that angle away from the ball. Hmm, let's, let's do this. Float putter distance away equals 0 0.7F. Move putter to distance based on, why is it complaining about this? Oh, because I haven't used it yet based on bound angle. Okay, first of all, to figure out the angle of the cursor to the ball. So, the camera itself has a function. So we're going to have to store the camera on here too. Nope, we already have the camera on here. It's called the camera that is supposed to follow the ball. So... <laughs> That has a function called, hold on, 
we need to get the camera component actually. So instead of storing a game object, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna store it as a camera and then I'm going to get that component once I find the object. Which will return the camera type. Viewpoint, viewport to ray. Input dot mouse position, there it is. Our ray equals that and then debug dot draw ray. Ray dot origin, ray dot direction, I guess. And then see how that works. So one thing I'm going to do is put this into a different screen so we can zoom out and see what it's doing. Oh, okay. So it is doing a thing. It's not, it's not at all what I wanted to do though. Hmm. Screen point to Ray, I think is what we're looking for here. Yes. Okay. And you can't see it on the screen itself, but if you look at the camera, you can see that the ray is being drawn. So that's cool and all. You know what I think we need to do? I don't think we need to test against colliders. I think we need to test this against a very specific layer that we create ourselves, something like this. So at the ball, let's create, um, a plane, like an invisible plane, right here at the ball's position. So copy the strings transform, or we can just do this, copy the X and Y of it. And Z will be zero. Okay, and then we'll make it like super tiny. And that's honestly good enough. We are going to disable, or we're gonna completely remove the mesh renderer, like that. We're gonna make this thing a child of ball so that it follows it wherever it goes. Why, 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 why is it so big? Goodness me. This thing needs to be like, that no wonder oh i think it, that's what it had it on and i changed it okay whoops let's let's make a new layer i don't like how there's a limited number of layers i guess it's not reasonable that i'd use them all but anyway um this one should be called putter collider because why not and we'll set that to the putter colliders layer. Why are there, oh, oh, right. I don't need that anymore. Let me, let me delete that. Make it the same texture as the putter for now. We don't need to cast shadows on this thing. We don't need to receive shadows either. And do a ray cast against that only. So we have the ray, or might as well keep draw, drawing it. And let's do um, physics dot ray cast um, the ray. Layer mask, okay, layer mask. Is there a way I can, I guess this layer to name to layer. Name two layer, um, putter collider. Anything else? No, that's it. So that's going to cast our ray and see if it collides with the putter collider. In fact, forget draw ray. Let's draw a line. From the ray's origin, ray.origin, ray.direction. <laughs> 
out hit info. There we go. Hit info dot point. Yeah, there it is. Okay, that's all we need for our, our line draw. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. Okay. That shouldn't be that shouldn't be hitting it. Okay, so first you have to bit shift it. One bit shift the layer and then invert that. Okay. Okay, I can do that. I need to like store this somewhere maybe, but I don't think it's that complex of a situ of a uh of a calculation. Okay, so that should actually just give us that layer. Hmm, actually... Oh, wait, no, what am I thinking? Dude, it's 2 a.m. This is... It doesn't need to be inverted. It's specifically this layer alone, not everything but that layer. We had the right idea. We just inverted ourselves. Tends to happen. So now it won't draw it unless, and watch this. Yeah, there. And it's, yeah, it's not carrying about the wall anymore, so it is hitting that. Okay, that's something. So there we go. Okay, now that we have that, we just have to see, um, what I don't want is it to, like, snap from one to the other really quick when you go through the bowl. Like, there needs to be an empty circle. How big is the bowl? We know the ball is, like, 0.4 meters across, even though it doesn't say that. So we can come in here in Blender, and we can see this thing's dimensions are 0.4 meters. The leopard ball <laughs> so if we have a hit and hit info dot distance no that's from the origin and vector three dot distance actually I don't think I need to do a vector three dot distance I think I can do a um, Transform dot position dot no I can't do that okay and vector three dot distance between our position and the hit infos dot point is greater than point five. Then we want to draw the line. So that'll that'll take care of like inner circle stuff. Let me see if that actually does what I want it to do. Yeah, so you see it's not hitting the plane around the ball. You have to come at least out like this far before it does anything. And I, I guess I could decrease that by like half, but that's the that's the um, objective there. Yeah, okay, that's fine. That's fine. I'll leave it as is. In fact, I'm gonna increase it to like 0.4. All right, now, um, so we have a hit. Now we just need to figure out where, what that angle is. How do I figure out an angle? That's a, that's a calculus thing. Trigonometry, maybe, actually. And I don't, is there, is there a, hmm. 
I don't know if there's a built-in function for that or if that's just like a simple thing I can do. So you do this. Arctan 2, P2 minus P1Y, P2X minus P1X times 180 divided by math to pi. And yes, I'm going to copy this. Okay. Oops. Angle. Let's see if there's something we can do here. Um, butter dot rotate around actually. Isn't that something I can do? Rotate around. And we don't want to set its rotation, but we do want to move it to a thing. Rotate around the ball. Ah, there's the angle. This needs to be transform.position.right and um, wait, what? Transform dot up or dot right, I guess. And the angle is what we need. Okay, we'll come back to that. Where was that function? Let's do this. Um Load delta y equals hit info dot point dot y minus transform dot position dot y and do the same thing for delta x and then we have our delta y we have our delta x Time is 180 divided by pi. Is there a way I can like spit that out on the screen? Hit to clutter up the thing, but we'll see. Right, angle. Let's just log the angle and see what we got. I mean, <laughs> let me comment this out. Let me just log it for now before I get frustrated on the, how it doesn't work. Okay, here we go. That... Uh, and let me multiply this whole thing by, um, let's say if hit info dot point dot X, is it X? Maybe, I don't know. You know what? Let's let's do what makes sense. Transform dot point dot z negative one plus one. That'll at least give us a sign. Mm. That's actually promising. That's very promising. So, okay, so we have an angle now. It might be reversed, it might not be reversed. Let's assume it's reversed and do what I was going to do in the first place. Greater than. Okay. Now we have our angle. Okay, and we do this. Probably not. Let's see what happens. I don't think that's gonna work at all. I have zero faith in this. <laughs> no, that's animating it. That's funny, though. Yeah, that just controls the speed. Okay, not what I wanted to do at all. But good stuff. So instead of that... <laughs> degrees, we need radians. Okay, here, let me just copy this. So we have our we have our degrees. We don't need that. So we have our angle times degrees to radians, cosine sine. In fact, I don't I don't even want this extra variable in there. Um, new point x. Actually, no. Let's do this. New vector 
var new point equals new vector three. Um, the X will be this, the Y, or not the Y, this, the Y will be zero, and the Z will be this. Then we simply set the position of the putter to the new point. I know this won't be right, it's going to like center it and stuff like that. But if, hold on, new point times putter distance away. I love that guy's answer. Does it blend? Will it blend? No, it won't. Oh, it might, actually. It's way up there. Oh. No, that's actually working out pretty well. I think I have it reversed. Like, I think this needs to be less than again. Um, and this new point needs to be, hold on, how did he do it? It needs to be the transform.position plus the new point times the distance, I believe. Oops. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's not perfect. Like, there's something wrong with the angle. But that's the idea. Hmm, I'm not sure about that angle thing. That's kind of weird. Well. Anyways, that's good enough for now. All right, let me take that log out of there for now, or just comment it, I guess. And we will continue at a later date. So, whoever happens to be around, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Have a good night.